so let's get on to the door bars here. Um, there's a few different designs that you can incorporate and then they're allowable in the uh, world of GTA and RTA and many other local sanctions. They usually just kind of take off from GTA. Uh, the most common design you see is the X brace. So a little start up top and it'll go down to the bottom in a diagonal form. And then you'll see another brace or you know another tube that'll come off of here, weld to the primary. And then another one that takes off and welds down there so you actually get the S. So it's two diagonal braces crossed, obviously three different tubes. Uh, that's one design. The other one is the curved design, which I use the most, uh, most often. And the curved design will come down and uh, instead of uh, cutting the tubes and welding them all together and whatnot, you'll actually just put a bend in it and then kick the top tube up and then the same one goes to the bottom. So that's the design I'm going to use. It's the one I use most common. There is a safety feature involved in that, which was actually by request and will be added to this. And that is the ability to kick the tubes outward a little bit because uh, it's, as I mentioned earlier, it's kind of difficult to unbend a bend. So the impact or the side loading uh, from an impact uh, would go more into the bend. The bend would actually try to uh, break outward, which is a lot more difficult than, uh, you know, concaving or actually pressing into uh, a set of uh, bracing and whatnot. So that's the design we're going to use. So let's start with what we know. We definitely know the design. Um, I do know that I want a higher upper tube and uh, I know that it's going to be somewhere around this line here because we still have to consider egress, which is a fancy way of saying get the hell out of the car when it's uh, on fire. <laughs> Emergency escape. So you have to consider egress. There's not a lot of space in here to actually work with. So a high bar is going to be extremely difficult to get out of when the time comes uh, if you ever have the emergency egress. So I'm going to keep it relatively low and uh, I'm going to run on this line here, which uh, I've already measured up, comes out to 10 inches. So I'm going to make this 10 inch mark my center line. So that's going to be still, you know, not, not too much higher than the seat. Um, it'll, it'll be relatively easy to get over and of course an emergency egress still possible. So what I do not know is the angles that I need to bend everything out to actually make this. Now I can look at this and say that my lower tube needs to be about this high with the other tube stacked on top of it. It's going to be about 20 degrees, but we're going to double check and measure that out anyway. I do know where it needs to land, which I have it marked here on the tape. Uh, this was during the driver's fit check. His elbow actually runs right about here. So when he's turning and whatnot, he's not going to be elbowing and smacking the tubes. So they need to be a little bit lower than the seat. They need to be in this general area that I have marked out with the tape here. So I'm just going to take a couple of boards here. And just kind of stick them in there because this will help me set everything up and whatnot and measure out my angles. I also use the cheater with a piece of inch and a quarter in the middle of it. And that helps me uh, slide this and move it in whatever direction while I'm lining it up with the back. So I'm just going to line it up with the lower section of the main hoop. Just kind of set it up there. And I'm going to get my bend right here in that area. And I'm going to take my, you know, another bend. This is just a throwaway that I use for scraps and whatnot. I'm going to place it on top of that where it's eventually going to be. Kind of give it a semi-decent lineup, shooting towards the rear there, and say, okay, yes, I like this height, or no, I don't. So I do like this height where it's sitting at, actually. So I'm going to, you know, lucky enough on the first try, I got the boards to sit right where they need to be. So since I don't know how long the tube needs to be to my first bend, um, I'm just going to take a measure. I'm measure a little past the main hoop, right up to the beginning of the bend on the cheater bar. Looks like about 15 inches. So 15 inches worth of tubing. Now we'll measure the angle, roughly where it needs to be. This is, uh, look at that, 20 degrees. Just like that. <laughs> yeah, I've been doing this for a while. So I'm going to take this other tube and we're going to set it up top and I'm going to, I'm going to aim for, I'm going to aim for this, the top there where I actually needed to mate up. And since I do not know that angle, that's at about 40 degrees. And then uh, we need to take a, kind of another measure here and I'm going to aim for that center line. Now this is kind of eyeballing here and there's a reason why. And it looks like that's about well, roughly 10 degrees. So I'm going to start with about 40 or 45 degrees, do a fit check in here and then find out where that's going to be at. 
So I know that the start of this bend, which is actually marked out on this tube, luckily enough, you can barely see it. So I'm going to kind of use this as my cheater. And I'm going to aim for the spot where I want to weld it. And it looks like the start of that bend is about grow 18, 19. I'm going to go 20 just to be on the safe side because that's a, that's a pretty hefty notch that we have to run out of that one. So we got the measurements of the tubes. We know about how long they need to be. So this one, two feet plus the 15 inches. Each one, I'm going to say that each one needs to be yeah, we'll make them about 48. 40, 48, somewhere in there. We'll cut them about that long. And then we'll get them in, bent up and slapped in here real quick. This should be pretty easy to do. Well, I got lucky a couple of times here, actually. Uh, first one, obviously, being with the uh, measurements there. I got the like 20 degrees. I guessed that right, which is a pretty good educated guess, actually. But, you know, hey, I got that right. That was cool. And uh, then everything lined up on the first try with those boards. And now this. I looked in the cut pile, and I know my lower tubes are going to calculate to roughly 41 inches of material that I need, and I found this piece right here that's already at 82 inches, so all I got to do is make one cut and cut it in half. That's about 20 right there. This is just general placement here. Looking pretty good. Uh, let's see. Yeah, 20 ought to do it. So by the time I actually get it back up, trimmed and uh, notched and whatnot, it's gonna be a little higher than uh, directly down at the base at the rocket boxes. So, looks like 20 degrees is the magic number. So I'm gonna prep these and get them notched up. And that shouldn't shouldn't take too much effort. Yeah, this should be pretty pretty easy. I'm gonna get these notched up real quick and get the top tube. Now this form of notching is actually extremely difficult to do, and it's uh you need to be very very particular with it because your face line is actually going to be on a oh, kind of a angle, or it's not going to be you know completely uh, dead on where it's supposed to be. So. You need to make a reference line here of about where the depth of the throat's going to be. And then your face line, which you have to kind of eyeball and roughly get the angle correct, will be about there. So, one third tube diameter. We're actually going to uh, cut this out this way to kind of reference about where it needs to be. So I'm going to turn the tube on its side and uh, we'll mark it out again so I can get the correct cut. So one thing I didn't mention earlier, uh, you know, slipped my mind, but uh, as far as the main hoop placement is concerned, it does have a certain degree of layback. And you'll notice that if you try to just place the tube in here and you know set it up notched in there and then you try to slide it down that it gets stuck over on that side the reason why is because the tube has to fit around the other tubes in order to you know for the correct notch so the uh, main hoop does have a slight layback to it so you start the tube from up top and you try to slide it down as level as possible to lay into where it needs to otherwise you won't be able to get the tube in so, I've been doing uh, working on these notches, and I have just a tiny bit more to go until this door bar fits perfect and it's ready. All right, so we need to be able to weld the tube 360 degrees all the way around, and I refuse to let the the tubes actually contact the chassis. I think that's kind of tacky, so I'm gonna put a spacer in there. These notches are pretty tightly fitted right now. 
him a couple thunks of encouragement. And of course, double check the back. Make sure it's still accessible. I'm going to use this piece of eighth inch steel to set my gap. And we should be good to weld. All right, I just did a really quick uh, 40, 45. I think it was actually it was about 43 and a half, somewhere in there. I'm just going to do a quick fit check here and see. Uh, how close I am. We're within the ballpark still. And, uh, I can give it another five degrees. So I'm going to put this back in the bender real quick and set it back up on my mark. And I'm going to I'm going to end up kicking it up to, to 50 degrees. All right, I got the door bars completely fitted up. And uh, of course, I didn't focus a whole lot on, on the welding there. Uh, you know, you've seen me weld a whole bunch throughout this video. So I mean, uh, a little bit, uh, a little bit less is not going to hurt uh, being able to see. But it is very tricky to get inside of some of these places and whatnot. And there has to be a lot of focus for me to get that. So that's why I didn't put most of it in. But the door bars are completely installed. Now you can definitely see at this one that I went high in the rear just like I wanted to before, went low, have it set up. The only spot that is not set up the exact same spot is over here in the corner where I had my 10 inch center line. I actually dropped it down a little bit and the reason why is because this window has to you know, be able to roll down. I do consider it slightly tacky if you have to open your door to roll down the window because the crank will hit the door bar. Now, also, when I set the seat back up in here, I realized that at the 10 inch mark, it was just a little bit high. So to assist an egress a little bit uh, more that the bar, I wanted to bring it just a little bit lower anyway. So it kind of worked out greatly in that one. Now, one thing that you can definitely see is that the bars have an outward bend to them. And this is the best way I can demonstrate this angle. But the problem that we run into is when it does have the outward angle, uh, we're gonna have to end up trimming the door a little bit. And you can see here where it starts to hit. Now it does specify in the street class of the RTA and GTA rule book that all door cards, dash, center console, all plastics, OEM controls, components, they need to be in place and in the car and installed and functioning. Now you are permitted to make whatever necessary modifications, and I mean absolutely necessary modifications to facilitate the installation of the roll cage. So, since we can't close the door, it is absolutely necessary that we trim back that door card to allow the door bars to actually slip in there and we can close the door. So, pretty simple. <laughs>